good evening welcome to another episode of cinema chat with amita sri lanka's first linkedin live talk show good evening to everybody who is joining on linkedin on facebook and on youtube so let me talk a little bit about this show i have been running this for a little over one year now and when the pandemic hit this is one of the first thing i did and i'm one of the first few to receive linkedin live in sri lanka and then i was thinking okay how do i add value to my network i have more than uh, 19000 uh, connections relationships on linkedin so i thought okay why don't i go live and then i bring an expert and talk about a uh, expert subject and then after so many episodes and today it's 58 episode number 58 and uh, let me uh, talk a little bit about myself as well my name is amita gamage i'm an executive coach and i'm a personal branding strategist too and then i help organizations achieve their b2b sales goal by working with their uh, b2b sales force uh, that's what i do virtually and then talking about today's show Uh, you know i have brought many sri lankans living abroad uh doing a lot of things uh, you know they have left the country but then they have made some significant changes in their respective fields so i have brought in uh, authors engineers software developers digital marketers today we have a very special person uh see Uh, especially after the pandemic i think uh, almost everybody is looking for new markets everybody wants to conquer new markets look for new customers in whatever their respective field that they are in and then apparently i uh, met this gentleman about a you know a year ago maybe online we have had a little chat and then uh, at that time i was not thinking about uh, bring him on board and then recently i thought why don't i bring him here and then uh, get him to share his experience because he works with uh, international clients so i'm not going to mention his name here but then i'm i'm going to ask him some questions by after bringing him on to the stage good evening to you hey how are you hi hi amita thank you for having me yeah so i want you to tell me how to pronounce your name um yeah my uh, pronounce my name is calvin calvin as a calvin chintaka okay so you heard it calvin so you have seen his uh, profile uh, because i have posted a flyer on my social uh, channels so he's uh, a photographer he is a filmmaker he is a creative uh, storyteller he is a multidisciplinary artist and then for me uh, most importantly why i like him is about because he has conquered uh, beyond borders that's not an easy thing for for an artist for a creative to do so i'm going to ask him a lot of questions and uh, my friends if you have any question uh, throw them put them on and uh, calvin is going to uh, answer and offer as much as value so now this is one of the questions that i always ask about the beginning you know i'm i'm, I'm trying to identify the root cause also <laughs> how about uh, letting us know a little bit about your childhood right so um thank you for having me again so i was born in sri lanka in kandy and i always studied arts art will be my background and so i started from drawing um watercolor art to a sculpture that sort of a thing that's where i grew up and um with a very artistic sort of family and 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 the background um from from there since i obviously um came back came to uk um i i had always had passion in photography film making uh, storytelling and that's that's sort of uh, where where it sort of led 
uh, to who I am today. And um, yeah, childhood was more all about like breaking things, making things, and like like <laughs> like, uh, like my my interest was more breaking than um, breaking the actual uh, <laughs> what do you call the the toy rather than playing with it. So because I was really okay. curious. Thank you. Okay, so my next question now. Since you are from Sri Lanka, and again you are from Kandy, uh, you know we live in a, uh, at least we used to live in typical society, where art and craft were not considered by the parents. When the kid says, "Hey, look, I like arts," you know the first thing they say is, "Hey, look, I want you to be a doctor, lawyer," you know the the traditional professions. Uh, what kind of a support or a, a objection you had from your family when they realized that? you are more into art luckily i didn't actually had um any any objections from my family because i i always like art like i said my my uncle uh, is kinsley gunatilaka uh, he is uh, one of the um, renowned and oil, oil artist uh, in sri lanka and who obviously happens to lo- live next door and um, <laughs> so we we used to have this art classes like every saturday sunday and we used to go and do painting and i grew up with you know him see him um, yeah doing a lot of art stuff and and also like my granddad used to you know get these roots from the old um um old trees and they trees. used to paint paint them and make sculptures of them and varnish them and and make it upside down and put it in so so that's sort of a culture i grew up and um i i i thought my my parents thought like make make sure you whatever you do you make it as a career that you can support yourself uh, but there was no uh, such thing as i have to become a doctor so in that way i think i was lucky yeah i definitely you would have been lucky to have parents who understand and who support the passion of their children amazing uh, glad to know that so my next question is like okay then you finish your education right and you know most of us uh, again looking at sri lanka at that time uh, at least you enter you know corporate world or you you join a company to work and then later on you know you start uh, following your passion or whatever what happened to you right so i like like many people i i started in a in a, like a retail career uh, in it so of so i was like from i went through the usual it networking that sort of a stage and um but quickly got into graphic designing at that sort of a stage so um my when i was like we came, came out from the like a school um and, and a college then i was more into like computers more into like again assembling disassembling computers you know those days you buy all the parts and you know put yeah. together and you make a pc so that's uh, and you continuously keep buying different memory sticks and everything you just like evolve it and computer gaming and stuff that's over came from there i um you know i i picked up small work from the community um i in london um small there, there was like i went start going into a um free events and start taking pictures and them and you know put it on a facebook groups and stuff and you know used to make a little logo and put them and little flyer and that's that's where the passion has started and then um then obviously in later stage we'll talk about it how I sort of evolved that into a professional career okay so uh, was there a moment that you were kind of lost as what you was i mean let's say you got into assembling computers then a little bit of photography then there's art inside you like it will not be easy to figure out where you should be going you know should you become a photographer or, or a filmmaker or a graphic designer or some do something in it you know how did you figure out uh, where to move so yeah that's a good question so what happened was like when i was working in my it field um, um those uh, luckily and i got redundant from one of the jobs i was doing and and, and i worked in that job for a few years and they gave me a redundancy package and um and then i thought like okay well it's this is great and um and i took some time off from uh, from uh, my work 
um, that's that. And then I met some few friends, and they were, those friends were saying like, "Hey, um, you know, why well, you you really have the passions for this photography and little bit filmmaking and this and that? Why don't you study?" Um, then obviously we, we we went through the discussions and we had a look at the universities and stuff and that's where I uh, I sort of made the decision okay well I'm gonna I'm gonna fully invest myself and I'm gonna go a three year degree in um, fashion photography or, or photography and filmmaking but I end up with doing fashion photography and you know made a portfolio and I end up with studying in London College of Fashion uh, which is part of the University of Arts a BA honors degree. Uh, one of the best in the world um, um, yeah and then done loads of projects and collaborations and while I was doing fashion photography um, there was a module that um, that we had to explore filming and that's the time I got into filming and start doing explorations and stuff and and through that experience I, I thought like wow like if I can show a picture um, and now I can show a whole story because I can suddenly like move my picture. And that's where my interest came in. And my sort of a career now like went from like fashion photographer to like a fashion filmmaker. Okay. So um, you talk a lot about fashion and then I know a lot of your work today is connected to fashion so that uh, is it the is it your college degree that pushed you towards fashion side of it? Um, no, so see, I I see the fashion in a uh, in a slightly different manner. So if you look at in like a um, old, I would say like a historical photographer like Ivan Penn. Um, so he even though he was a fashion photographer, but from my fashion photography, I learned how to uh, capture beauty, uh, how to see. A, beauty within a subject regardless the subject matter is so, so even a person who sits on the street or even a tree uh, even a, even a different subject matter so for me it was it's important that from the, my academic um, stage i invested a lot of time on the libraries and done a lot of research studies and stuff and how and developed myself how to capture the beauty of a person or a product uh, in in, a, in a different lightings, different ways, and different aesthetics, um, and different narrative. So that's why I call it a fashion. Fashion does not mean itself is a, a textile garment. A fashion can be a, a trend. Fashion can be a beauty. Fashion could be, um, you, you know, could be a, anything which relates to capture the beauty. Okay, uh, so. Uh... This is an additional question that I was right now while you are talking. I was thinking uh, now talking about Sri Lankan context. <clears throat> fashion also is is a developing uh, industry. Uh, it's not only the garments, as you said. I mean, fashion is in everything. Uh, I don't know your exposure to the uh, the fashion industry here, uh, but if you have been watching or understanding the trends you want to say anything about uh, the fashion photography industry in sri lanka yeah i mean i think it's developing i think there's great brands especially like i like a lobby um, and who, who has like a heritage brand of you take like a sarong um, in, in, into a like a then you, you trend it and modernize it, put some pockets on it, make it trendy and make it more accessible for uh, uh, people to wear. So, so the, the important factor is like a lot of people might think it's just fashion, but it's not just the fashion. It's fashion and the heritage that you're True. moving it forward, um, and it it gives a, a a message into the world. Like you know, we are. Uh, we are a, a society, we are a people with a big heritage, big culture, uh, and, and, and a huge um, um, color palette and, and, and address politics. So that's sort of a, a brand, uh, as well as there's a, there, there are brands like, um, if you look at Columbia Fashion Week, the, the designers, there are, there are very organic, sustainable designers comes through the Columbia Fashion Week as well. Um, and there are... Uh, 
there are boutique stores uh, which is helps um, uh, like um, what, which one is the uh, I think it's called the collection uh, and they have like a different um, designers can represent their brands. So if you look at like a dress fashion politics in Sri Lanka, I think it's evolving. I think it's going in the right direction. It's, we, are, we are more open to um, wear and express ourselves. Um, but, you know, there are more to be done and you, you need to take our sort of a culture into the international stage and put your hands up and say, hey, we are who we are. And this is our uniqueness. Uh, I think. I think the one missing thing. Um, not many Sri Lankan brands in a fashion in a sense. They don't use our unique um, placement in the world, and they they start doing a lot of things like other foreign countries are doing. But yep. uh, uh, but you know you need to look at like people like Barefoot, you could people like Lovi, people like. Um, even even a little bit with like embark and you know they start doing even though they are quite um, uh, touristy but you know we need to shout out who we are and we have a color palette you know if you look at from you know Candian era to Anuradhapura era right we look at the, even if you look at the the the, the wall, pictures on the walls you know yep. there are different greens there are different um, uh, reds. There are different and yellows, and and how the the patterns being made. Um, if you you know you can go to a, a candy mu a museum and you could see um, the the we we used to have something called a beetle bag. I don't yes. know whether people yeah, yeah. know. It's yeah. called a pot potania. Yes. Right? So this is a potania. It's a beetle bag. Uh, it's it's a big thing. It's not a small one. It's a big thing. You put it over the head and you go Carry from it. one to another. Right. And if you, there is a book, it's actually being written, there's over 500 different designs of beetle bags Oof. in Sri Lanka. Okay. And, and, th and they, these beetle bags have the different, I would say, um, logos from, because we have over uh, 200 uh, flags in Sri Lanka. Yeah. True. Right. And, and so, so I think, I think what we need to do is like, you know, as how to get into our international market is finding that uniqueness. Yeah. So uh, since you spoke about Lovi, uh, especially the, the sarong, like I, I know uh, how difficult for me to get my two kids to wear a sarong now, right? At least uh, for uh, the new year, you know, we, for one day, we get them to wear it. But then uh, I think what Lovi as a brand is doing is a great thing. You know, it's trying to uh, reinvent and then modernize, as you said, to suit the the local uh, modern day work. Uh, so it could be for, I don't know, it could come as a fashion uh, trend or it could be, I, I'm sure it is not going to help us on a day-to-day -day basis, but then when it comes to fashion, to weddings, to events, to evenings, I think uh, there's a whole lot of space available for it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you as a person looks like uh, uh, you see that trend because you are moving with international markets, and then you see that some of these brands, some of these design, uh, is uh, could be appealing to an international audience. So you wanna now you just mentioned that, but then you wanna uh, say something about how one how can one do a little bit of research. Maybe there's a brand over here in Sri Lanka, but then they really don't know how to go about this research and find out that niche. You want to give a few tips over there? Yeah, I think I think it's all about finding your audience and positioning yourself as a um, as a selling tool, right? So it's all about supply and the demand. Yeah. Right. So first of all, you obviously need to do a market research. What is the current demand? Who is it? What's the demand for? So if you look at, at the moment uh, in, in a design sort of for this industry, you know, people are looking for jewelry designers who would like CAD designs and people looking for game designers, people looking for um, VR, 3D, um, that sort of designers and uh, people looking for that, you know, 3D cinema, 4D cinema, that, that sort of a regime. 
uh, within the spectrum. So you look at the design, uh, demand. So how do you find that? You go to LinkedIn, you go to LinkedIn jobs and you put a, um, a London or America or Paris and you put photographer or whatever the, and then you will have a related categories, right? Then you, you'll have a look and you'll be like, then you have a look at the titles. You know, it's a creative director they are looking for. They are looking for a designer, motion VFX, uh, a graphic designer. So there you are. So that's the demand. Then once you get like 20 or 30 demands, then you find out you can save those jobs. Then you can go to the job description. And you can have a look what they're actually looking for. They look so they they they're not the the days of people are saying hey we need someone with eight years experience are gone, no one's saying that anymore. People are yeah. saying hey we would like someone who can develop this 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 work with this 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 team collaborate do this part of the job. So once you find your demand, then you find the supply. Supply is you, right? Yeah. Then you have a look okay, how do I make a portfolio to match certain demands? So then you pick up like five. So for me, I'm a, you know, I do fashion photography, I do filmmaking, fashion filmmaking and corporate filming. And you know, I also work with um, branding, brand identity in a, in a fashion and a corporate segment, in, in a storytelling segment, right? And then that's, where I look at my portfolio and say, okay, so now what do I want to show? And when you show clients, only show what you want to be hired for. Yeah. I, I have great pictures of my grandma and a dog in Sri Lanka and the holidays I go to Budapest and you know my girlfriend's pictures and my once I take on my iPhone and, you know, I have all of them, but do, do I need to put all of them on my Instagram and my, on my website? No, because that's not what I'm selling. You only show what you want to be hired for. Known for, hired for. Yeah. That's it. Simple as that. And then you find what that bit, and then you find what are my best 10 work, right? And you show them. It doesn't matter whether they are three years old, five years old, uh, whatever, as long as it's relevant. And this is what I wanted to hire it for. And so you identified your um, demand. You identified, you positioned yourself as a supplier, right? And then you have a look at those keywords and have a look at, again, going back to that jobs, you know, have a look at how are they, um, uh, you know, I can just, I can just go to the, um, uh, jobs now and I can just put it as a brand specialist in London there you are just coming as a brand development specialist hybrid working role right and I can get a brand specialist team lead in Amazon um, brand manager in internal communication brand specialist so now I just read it so you, when you make your CV or when you make your portfolio, you use those words. And you said like you are a brand development specialist or a, a lead or, um, you know, isn't that right? Uh, I mean, we talked about this yep. special, specialist word uh, in few yes. uh, clubhouse sessions. sessions. Yeah, I know. I mean, I love the way you reverse engineered it. You know, you first go check what the market is looking for and look at those specific keywords and see what you are special specialized at and then highlight not everything, only what the market wants or what you want to sell. Amazing. Like, it's a little bit of common sense, I would say. <laughs> uh, just yeah. filter and yeah. Of course. So yeah, and, thanks. And, and I think I think I think yeah. um, from from some of the sessions I was listening about Amita and Amita um, talk about when it comes to personal branding and stuff. You talk um, so much about this word of specializing to something. I think yep. I think this is. Uh, I mean, and 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 the thing is, it's just if you go even to like everyone is want someone who is specialized on something. Because we can just yes. even even say like you know we are not gonna buy bread from the guy who make I don't know no, bricks, no. right? We buy <laughs> we buy the bread 
you know, we trust the guy in a bakery who specialized making bread. And so True. we go to that person to buy bread. True. <laughs> and, and it's the same thing when you wanted to make a video. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have a friend, uh, Saumya, uh, watching it from all uh, from India. Hi, Saumya. Thank you for joining us. And then we have uh, Tamit, uh, who also Hi, is into yeah, he's into agriculture and stuff like that, making videos uh, from Panadura side. Hi, Tamit. Thank you very much for joining with us. Uh, so I have a tough question for you. I don't know. I, I consider this as tough. <laughs> okay. uh, are creatives born or made? Oh, that's the question. I mean, I was talking with this with my girlfriend last night. Um, <laughs> uh, um, where, uh, because um, is the creatives are born or made? I, I think it, it, it's a tough one because <laughs> it would be very offensive you say to someone... Um, you are not a creative, right? <laughs> so that's, you know, you're just like, but some people like creative stuff. Some people like analytical stuff, right? Yeah. That's how our brain works, mm. right? In, I think if, if, if the creatives are, I think we were born as an open palette, Right. And obviously then, I mean, I was so lucky. I was born in Kandy, which is one of the most amazing cities in the world. And my house is in like a walking distance to Maligawa. And I literally grew up in um, the Kandy Lake, Maligawa, listening to the Berra sound in the evening. Um, wow. And that's sort of a culture. I get goosebumps. I, I get goosebumps. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that's the culture. I, I you know, I, I, when I walk home, I walk home throughout the flower um, shops that I can go smell the, um, you know, the saman picture and all those. So aroma. So that's, that's inherited. Then what, that's the creative process. Because then you are looking. Because when you go to school in the morning, what you see with the slightly the mist on the lake, right? And when, yeah. I, when I finish and when I go play cricket and when I go home, home on the way, I enjoy the sunset. So the sunset coming through, the sun rays coming through, and some days is like completely like a blood red completely. So that's the creative process. So you were born as an empty palette and you get exposed into the things, right? And so I, and then when I, since I grew up most of my life in London, then I, it got more commercialized. Now I see commercial buildings, my, see. So that's the palette and I was, and then I, created my creativity then i made a conscious decision and said i wanted to explore and i think this is where people make this decision i don't want to explore yep right because everyone a day they will pick something and drop it on the floor just to see what's going to happen right so you are create in a creative you have a creative mindset that's why you pick something and drop it on the floor and to, just to see what's going to happen so I think, I think we, everyone make a conscious decision and say, hey, I wanted to become a, you know, you could say, like, I, you know, I have a lot of my doctor friends, right? You cannot say they are not creative because I, I remember I had a little cyst here. Okay. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, Dr. Chamara, uh, Dematawa, he's from Kandy, he's a, he's, a, he, he's a plastic surgeon. And he goes like, Machang, we'll, we'll cut it. Right. And, <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean we cut it? He, then he was giving me so many options and I can cut it. I can put some sticks. I can burn it. I can do this. I can do that. Don't worry. And I will get rid of it. Anyway, after that, he just went to the hospital one day and, and he said like, okay, you know, he's like, I can do this. I can do. So he's using his creative because I think everyone is um, creative, especially like the plastic surgeons and stuff. They are creative in a way. So I think the different when, when you ask me the question, people are born as a creative or people make as a creative. I think when you come to that decision-making stage, yep. right? You, I decided to become a creative. Then I also decided to express myself as a creative. So a lot of people, everyone they are creative. Everyone can be creative, but they don't make the decision to visually express themselves. And that's where the breaking point. The minute you become a visually expressing, then 
you become the artist and then now you want to take some paint and put it in and frame it because now you're using your creativity and pushing it to visual expression. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I think that's so over somewhere because... No, uh, because I, I know. Everyone is, yeah. I, I can see all the reasons why you are creative. <laughs> that <laughs> Thank is, you. That's <laughs> okay, we have a few other friends joining. We have... Uh, Kanchana Ariratna, great discussion. And we have, I don't know whether you know some of them, uh, Ruchita Vikrama Singha, uh, hey, it's all good. And then uh, we have uh, Anupama Ariratna, hi, sir, one of your MBA students from Candy, good stuff. You know, you, you say all the good things about Candy, of course. You know, I, I got goosebumps. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Hapatali, yeah. but I was getting goosebumps. You know, <laughs> Samam Pichasu and then Berasadhi and all that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, and then uh, Dulip, uh, Dulip says, great. Hi, Dulip. Thank you very much for hi, joining. Hi, yeah. you know, if you have any questions, of course, I have enough questions uh, to throw at him. But then <coughs> if you want to ask anything, uh, please, uh, you can ask. So I have another question. Uh, can you grow a business by working as a freelancer? Like, you know, were you... When did you decide, okay, I'm going to be freelancing, uh, like you could join some organization, but then you had to move out one day and then you had to start your journey. And then it's very rarely you start a journey with a bunch of people. More or less, it's a solo journey at the beginning. What can you say about that? Uh, I think, listen, I, I was listening to this uh, inspirational talk in YouTube once and uh, it's from Will Smith. And, and he said, um, every wall is being made by laying by a single brick. You know, you're never going to go and say, like, I'm going to be made the, you know, even, even when they make the great wall of China, no one say, I'm going to make a great badass wall from now. No, you, they must have put the one brick, another brick, another brick, another brick. They might think, okay, now we can extend this. Okay, now we can put a little gatehouse in there let's put something a hole here and you know i think it, it, it's the same with the creative journey you know it's i think you 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 can become a business um i think the minute you want to become international business i mean the minute you're on a placement that's what you're talking about scaling yep. right scaling outsourcing and you know collaborating team team sizes and that's that's the scaling. But as a freelance, yes, you can do a business. Um, so I was a freelance for many years in the industry. And uh, then I ran, I scaled my business to a, I have some, I have some um, another contractor staff. Then I descaled it. And then I went in a freelance uh, because various reasons. And um, then I now I am full time employed by um, a marketing agency, one of the biggest marketing agencies in the world. A um, uh, few reasons. Uh, one of the reasons uh, when you are working in a freelance sector for way too long, um, you don't know what's happening around the world. Yeah, you, know, you, you might know, miss it, it, you miss loads yes. of stuff. Um, so I need to get back to the game, and now since I'm working in the big marketing agencies and you know, I'm working with all the international clients from Meta to Samsung to Waze to you know, big clients and in their big projects, I get to see the uh, pitch decks. I get to see the, how they work in stuff. And so, in it, so I am just like, like a big sponge, just like absorbing That's everything. Absorbing. Um, yeah. And, and, and that, that helps me to develop. So, and so I'm still working as a freelance. My, my freelance work is now um, uh, more for the weekend, right? Um, so I, I do a lot of freelance work in the weekend. Um, yeah, that makes me sometimes work seven days a week. And um, yes, I mean, that's how it is. So, it's your passion. It's your passion. Yeah, see, I, I, I live in my holiday, right? Uh, you know, I don't want to go on a holiday. I, I love what I do. And, yeah. and if you love what you do and you shouldn't be having problems with doing it and repeating it every day. 
Yeah. And when and so um, yeah, I know I do travel a lot, and I you know I am mainly um, I used to be coming to Sri Lanka uh, every three months or so pre pandemic, but I'm obviously through the travel restrictions that's been so I am mainly based in uh, London. I would say about seventy percent now. Um, then I obviously. Um, put myself from here to most and Budapest as well. That's somewhere I also um, I spend a lot of time in Budapest. Um, and uh, obviously lo- looking at next year, so we, it will be London, Budapest, Greece, sort of a, that sort of a segments. Um, but yes, you can um, become a, um, a entrepreneur. You can make a business out of it, but it's how much you want to dive into your business. You know, you can stop any stage or you can stay in any stage. So you have the, you have the progress and you have your business timeline. In a timeline like this. And you, know, you can go here and go idle. So you could say yeah. like, I am a freelance photographer. I'm happy here, go idle. You can go up to, I'm a photographer, videographer. I want a slow, steady start. Or you could say, I, I came here. Now is the time to scale get some you know, investment, seed funding or bank loan or whatever, get some staff, open up a mini agency and scale up there. So it's, I think it's, it's up to you. Yeah. Depends so how think, much money you need. Yeah, so live. I think you, you <laughs> answered my next questions also partially. But then okay. let me anyway ask you, uh, uh, being in uh, international markets, you know, because you have been exposed to big brands and all that. So uh, for, a, for someone... You know who is who is an artist who is a creative. Uh, whether building a personal brand is ideal, uh, or whether he should be building a commercial brand, uh, uh, you know, as an international. Yeah, I understand you know? the question. Yeah. yeah, I think I think first of all, I again goes back to the brick layer in brick, right? You need to get known to something, right? Uh, you know you. I didn't start thinking I want to make a brand. I start, mm. I want to make great pictures and I want to enjoy what I do. Yeah. Right. And, and that's what I do. Then I'm like, okay, this is quite cool. I can also then, make some and money. Money is, out a of by, this. money is a byproduct. Money is a byproduct and the branding is a byproduct. So to make money, you make a brand because uh, that's how it works. And not all the time, but there are so many freelancers uh, or work in their name and they are, they are very, very respected. So you, I always think start with yourself, develop yourself, um, make yourself known within your first local area, then national area. Then once you get your confidence, once you make a portfolio, once you made so many mistakes and you made so many great ones, uh, uh, great projects as well, collaborate with people. Then if you want to go into a, a brand to make a brand, you can make a brand. But most of the time, I will actually quite happy to stay on my own in my name, but, but certain tax reasons, certain um, commercial reasons, right? Um, you know, some brands will only work with a limited company. Yep. You know, some brands will only work with a, a registered company which has a business a bank, not a personal right. bank, right? So yep. there are some commercial reasons. Therefore, I have, I have brands within my name that I operate in that segment as a brand because some of the, sometimes you have to, uh, you, you know, put bids in tenders. Yeah. For a little jobs, right? You can't go and say, hey, Calvin Sintagoni, to this is my pitch deck. <laughs> it doesn't work, right? No People, so, so you'd have to go. The protocols. With, yeah, so you'd have to go as a brand saying like, hey, um, so one of, um, one, of, one of the brands, so at the moment, um, all this time, I actually used my name as a brand as well. So that's something I've done with a Calvin Sintagoni as a brand. But from 2022, it's going to call Brand Human. Oh, okay. Right. So, so we are, we are rebranding to a the whole marketing for brand human for more sustainable, um, sustainable. Um, uh, uh, what do you call digital product? Yeah, sustainable, creative digital product 
creations, but we are looking only working with like sustainable brands and something to work uh, work around with uh, the, the, for the for the society as well with something we can do. That's why we call it brand human. So it's more responsible, earth friendly, human friendly uh, products that you are looking at to work yeah, with. Uh, yeah, I mean, put it this way, right? If we don't, there'll be there'll be no place to take any pictures of. So that's True. that's a that's a counterproductive, right? Yeah. So yeah. so we destroy everything around us, and then you'll be one day you wake up and like, oh, we just don't have a world to take pictures. And what do I do? Take pictures of? So I think uh, th- this is this is where we need to make some conscious decisions of like, you know, I know uh, I've been talking about thinking about this for a while, and you know, I love shooting on film. You know, it has a film that has aesthetics, but then again, if you look at the, the, the waste stage and the chemicals and the production and the carbon footprint and you know the, all the waste go into a whatever the waste lines and stuff um you know is it sustainable no it, using digital is more sustainable so I think I think we, we need to think about not just not being selfish and just create art for sake of it oh I'm going to make some money but uh, you know our you know our ancestors have thought about it right yeah and and, yeah. and if you because I, the they have some of the trees they have planted they probably never had a fruit from it True. in their life but they have they thought okay we need to put a, a tree right and i don't know how many people listening to this and i think i can see like 15 20 people listening to it and when is the last time you planted a tree for the future so we, we're yeah. becoming a selfish, money-driven artist um, regime, which unfortunately that that whole bubble is going to collapse. And when it collapses, and it's going to collapse in our own head. <laughs> so that's 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 the worst thing. You know, you build an empire, and then it collapses in your own head, and you get buried from it. Yeah, amazing. I mean, uh, see, I mean, you are so young. And then here you are talking about uh, something uh, that not everyone is interested talking about. And then you are living up to it. You can talk about it and then forget about it. But you are talking about and you know that you are blocking some of the money that is coming your way when you say, look, I'm going to work with these kind of brands. And then you are willing to... uh, willing to do that you are willing to take that sacrifice and i don't think you you do you even consider it as a sacrifice like that's something that yeah. you are doing for the long term yeah i mean this is thing is listen there's a lot of food in around the world right you're not going to go and eat everything yeah. just because you're hungry yes right you're not gonna yeah. because you're going to eat what pleases you right True. and i like and you know there's so many but in the same way, you know, you, you have to enjoy what you do and you need, you need to have a clear conscious of like, okay, well, you know, I done this job and that helped this person and, and this helped my, and you can go to sleep and it, it's no point having, you know, money, money equals to happiness, right? Money, <laughs> that, that's a byproduct of why we do we need the money because we yeah. need a X amount of lifetime, like life, yeah. a li- lifestyle, right? And yep. and you look at someone else's lifestyle and you start making money, that's not the way you become a creative. You know, you never go to become a creative photographer saying like, I am going to be a badass wedding photographer because I can make easy money just shooting weddings. No, you have to love the people, love the ceremony, love the food, love the event, love the couple, love the, f- believe um, that you're doing, you're making amazing stories that you can pass into another generations and another generations can sit down with the grandparents one day with a cup of coffee, um, with some cake and say like, hey, these are our wedding pictures. It's the same joy when I, I get, when I see my grandparents' wedding pictures, whoever done it. True. <laughs> it's, it's not for the money. Yeah, I know. Amazing. So uh, we have uh, Mahesh 
who says, uh, it's great pleasure to hear I am new one. You know, he's new here. And then he says, that's lovely because think about the nature and trees. Thank you for such a great uh, news. Give, uh, give through this talk. So it's amazing. I mean, you know, uh, this is also a message to the younger generation, aspiring photographers, filmmakers, artists, creatives. You are also sending a very strong message here. Yeah, so... My, uh, yeah, I, I also yeah. wanted to. Uh, um, I also wanted to put this one up. I mean, this is no way. I mean, never said this. I mean, son. I mean, I, I follow your son um, work, and um, and I, I see he start uh, helping young entrepreneurs and stuff. And it's really nice to see. I, I seen a couple of pictures the other day on LinkedIn, and he's he's sitting um, in, in this bench, and people are. Um, you know, sitting in this padura, which is like a very organic Sri Lankan made and stuff. And you could see like everyone is wearing like, you know, rubber slippers and they take him off and, and they're talking about these things. And I think, I think this is, this is the start point, right? I haven't done that when I was, how old is your son now? 12. Okay. When I was 12, definitely I haven't done that. That'd be, uh, <laughs> I, I'd be probably cut a lot of trees and, you know, kick lot of trees then, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely didn't even sit down when I was 12. I yeah. didn't, have the, didn't have the discipline. Uh, the but, naughty um, child. <laughs> no, but he didn't. He didn't need to because the world was not in a crisis when I was 12. It was yeah. looked after by <laughs> yes. our, our parents. Now we completely fucking ruined it. For, yeah. <laughs> for rest of our, now we need to work on it. So I look at like and um, 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 I mean, son's work, Nettila's work, Nettila's work. Then, then I send them a message and I said, like, listen, with 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 Lovi in Sri Lanka, we are doing this um, doing this program called Lovi Life. Um, we should get involved and um, and I can I can put to you Asanka Asanka Didmel. He's the he's the owner of Lovi and um, and we, 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 we let's get some kids and let's get them to get some sarongs and let's plant some trees and you know yeah. let them design something and let you know there's a facilities in 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 colombo they let them do a workshops and stuff i Super. think I, I think this is the connection we're looking at and you need to always reverse engineering yourself and you go back to where it is and this is for the mahesh i'm talking about like it, it start from the tree but then you look at like you know how do we help the younger generation and putting a tree and uh, and 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 um, and helping the nature. Nature is the environment. So nature is not just the what we see on on, on, a, on a mountain. Nature sure. is like our customs, our society, our heritage. So how do we how do we create that? How do we to tell the stories about it? And this is where I love being um, being a creative when there's a great product coming very soon about Sri Lanka and um, uh, yeah, which I've been working on for a while. Um, amazing. So let us know. I mean, we will, uh, you know, contribute in any way. And then, uh, of course, you know, with what you just mentioned, sometimes we may even need your help because Nathila also is doing a lot of uh, CSR work uh, to inculcate entrepreneurial skills among rural kids like selling skills to creative skills to creative problem solving to all that. So we are also planning to set up some remote help. There are some uh, people who are willing to help remotely who could give us a one hour little workshop or whatever. Yeah, of course. So we, we are all rural. We are yeah, all rural. Yeah. It depends yeah, where yeah. you look at it. From where <laughs> you are in the world, and for me, I am very rural because I'm on the other side. So there's no one is... <laughs> I said everyone is a rural person, yeah. you, you know. From where I live in London to center of the London, I am rural. Yeah, from true, it, true. you know, and we you know we have a, we have this saying right. The Subda Galavid Dinatan. If they may don't make the hole on the, <laughs> and we are still in candy, right? But I, 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 so so I I I think I, I think the most important thing is to knowing your surroundings. So I went around Sri Lanka. Uh, very quickly, uh, I went around Sri Lanka uh, about four years ago, I think. I came to Sri Lanka and and, and I was like, listen, I you need to discover this country where I'm from. I spent way too much, long in London and I don't know my people. I don't know the districts. I don't know the... Uh, uh, so I end up with um, getting one of my friends, Manoj Sirivarda. I said, Manoj, do you want to do a road trip for about a couple of months in Sri Lanka, right? 
Um, he's like, yeah, let's do it. So we went and got like two scooters and put some camera gear. And, and we started from Kandy. We went all the way around Sri Lanka to Jaffna, to Delft, all in scooters and come from the other side of the country. And months as we spent, um, you know, we spent in, slept in people's houses to temples to little little places we can find. A couple of nights, I think we end up sleeping on the road. Uh, we had these hammocks and stuff. And, and I documented everything. Wow. Right, so I took pictures as well, eleven thousand pictures all together, um, and and we came down to about three hundred pictures. Now we, um, I think, it's about two eighty will go on a book, and the book oh. is called Hopeful, and uh, and everywhere I see the hope, hope of someone wanting to do something better or become someone better. So I think this is the creativity of people be being hopeful. So. I captured authentic Sri Lanka. So I learned so much about, you know, why are the people in north to the south and what's the difference? It's the same people, but they have a different narrative, different stories. So, so going forward, I think I am also evolving. I think, I think you know, if you ask me the question, what I want to uh, be, what I next year, in next five years, I think probably a documentary photographer. You know, if I if I if I can become like Stephen Curry, right? Yeah. And you know, something like a National Geographic photographer, documentary photographer. That's where I am. My head is at because I'm like, even though I love fashion, love commercial, love the hustle and the buffer, bustle in the London city. You could I could just show you from outside um, where you are, <laughs> right? And um, hustle and bustle, and then obviously there's studio stuff on here. Um, you know, even though I love this, um, but you know, that's not where's my head at. I think yeah, my head yeah. at is more next to a sea. Um, and um, I can recall uh, the some of the Vietnam War photographies to World War II photographies. You know, one single picture that explains the whole World War II, maybe. You know, yeah. and so you know that the guy is a Robert Kappa, he's a Hungarian guy who, and he and his three friends sat down one day and said like, hey, we need to have a um, uh, agency to um, send our pictures to um, papers and let's call it Getty Images, <laughs> right? And, and that's Getty Images. That's how the Getty Images started, right? So okay. one of the biggest agencies in the world. And the Robert Kappa is the guy, he's a Hungarian, uh, war photographer, and um, you know we only have twelve shots of the D-Day to tell the the whole world to know the Second World War on the D-Day. We have twelve frames, twelve Seriously? shots, twelve shots That's Robert Kapash uh, uh, took when he was on the boat and landing in in, in, in into the D-Day. We only have to. I seen the original twelve shots. It's in. Um, uh, Budapest in Nadma Chutsa in the Robert Kappa uh, gallery. Um, okay. And then, then um, if, you, if, you, if you Google something called Mexican Suitcase, right? Uh, that's a documentary okay. uh, about Spanish war. Um, Robert Kappa took, um, took about, he was um, taking pictures of the Spanish war and, uh, and then he obviously died. And, um, and that's it, nothing happens. And people seen like 10 or 15 pictures. Um, so he given a suitcase with a bunch of pictures with the suitcase to a, one of the uh, generals, right? Uh, uh, and in, in Spain, and because, because of the war, they migrated to Mexico. And, the, and this general may have taken the suitcase and a few years ago, and um, someone discovered in someone's attic, a suitcase worth of, Negatives Four. and they give yeah. them to someone else and you know, some friends and they look at it and there's 4,400 pictures of a, a Spanish war. Spanish war. And this oh. was called the Mexican suitcase, the, the, the lost Mexican suitcase, suitcase. of Robert, Robert Kappa. And now we see New York and the Robert Kappa gallery. I haven't seen it personally, but I've seen the documentary. So this is what's photography yeah. this is what the history this is what you becoming an artist you you become an artist to uh, put a thumbprint that i've been here in the world and um this is my contribution 
I know right? you you are now thinking about your transformation as well. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm I'm thinking like what I can do to this world, right? Yeah. And, you yeah. know, you 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 were born, and you achieve something, and what? How can we give it back, right? And if we don't, and um, I think the uh, it's not sustainable, and we need to look after the world, or then the world will look after us. That's what I think. Yeah. So my next question is actually, you know, it will resonate with this also. So for an artist, for a for a creative, whether it's the qualification or whether it's the experience, what will make oh. a difference? I think I know I think I'm asking you a lot of tough questions. No, 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 it's okay. Um, I, I think the qualifications or the experience. I think I think experience can get you up to a certain level. Um, then the qualifications could be educational, or qualifications can be ex- uh, life qualifications. Now, qualifications could be anything. It doesn't have to be the piece of paper saying you done a degree XYZ and you had honors or second class or whatever. That's that's make no sense in the world. Right? If some, if I say to someone uh, in London, listen, I have a degree in London College of Fashion. Uh, it's, it's for BA honors, uh, fashion photography. Uh, um, you know, second upper class. They'd be like, great. What can you do? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it boils down to action. Yeah, I know a lot of people who have a driving license. They can't drive properly. <laughs> you have a driving That's license. Yeah, yeah, I mean, can I know a lot drive? of people. Can you drive? Can you drive fast? Can you drive safely? Can you go from A to B? Can you can you do high impact full driving? Can you reverse fast? And can you do a three point turn? You know, can you drive something with a trailer? That's the question. So I think, I think when it comes to it, the you you do need to study, like anything. Yeah. If you are interested, the studying again doesn't mean you had to go to the university. You would have to find a person to talk and absorb the knowledge, or have a conversation, or be in a discussion. Go to go to a library, and you need to learn. And if you learn, and that get converted into the experience. True. You know, if you eat bread, the bread will go into a tummy, and it become carbohydrate, and they turn it to the energy. <laughs> Right, True. you don't. True. People don't <laughs> run from bread. People run from the energy. In you know, if you read, if you if you have a good circle of um, creatives and the friends and the supportive community, and and if you go and spend time on the uh, on on the library, and if you learn things, if you explore, if you study and experiment, and if you know the limits and what works, what doesn't, that your learning skills can be your experience and that can be transformed into someone will buy that experience and someone will give you money and then you made a transaction and that is essentially a business. True, true. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a comment from uh, Trevin Divakar. He just put uh, Robert Kappa's The Robert work. Kappa, yeah, yeah. It's Magnum yeah. Pictures as well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so great, great, thank yeah, you, I mean, Trevin. Great, yeah, great photographer. Have a look, guys. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna definitely look at uh, the document. I mean, I, I Mexican so suitcase. Mes- yeah. So <laughs> let me suitcase, yeah. go and uh, look for it. So uh, then I have another question. Uh, what What should someone do, or what should uh, what should someone be avoiding in conquering international markets as a creative, right? Uh, sometimes you don't understand. I know it's 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 you need to be able to do things that is suitable to the the audience. But in terms of you marketing or you approaching clients to that, uh, if you talk about that, uh, what needs to be done or what shouldn't be done? I think I think you just need to be true true to yourself and don't don't go around and. Um start copying what other people do like like in their business plans or you know what works for them what works for it does might not work for you know, get inspiration don't say things that you can't do just be authentic and just say like hey this is my product and and this is me and this is what i'm selling or this is what i can help on and this is where i am at and this is you know you just need to be a piece of puzzle you know, you don't need to be, be the person who, who create the whole puzzle. That's a different person's job. 
<laughs> you, you know, and if you are that unique person who they cannot be without because you are a piece of that system, you need, the, you are the piece of that puzzle, then you have a value. Yeah. You know, so, so, so I think find to become that person um, you, you you have to just avoid being, you know, avoid being trendy maybe. You know, you find your trend within your niche. You know, yeah. you need to first find, you, you know, your USP, your unique selling point for yourself. So there's always, you. there's always a market for you. Yeah, there's always a market. I mean, you, you will say like, okay, well, you, you know, let's, let's, let's get the Mark and Spencer. Mark and Spencer is, tre- is mainstream. No, because Mark and Spencer have a target audience and certain people who buy brand loyalty, age group, a color palette, and, P- and for them, they, but they do sell shirts, but their shirts are Mark and Spencer, slightly different, slightly for mature clients. You know, so it, it's, it's for office wear or some, some maybe people between, I would say, th- you know, 20, 30 to 40 maybe. Right, mm. so that's their unique selling point. So you need to find a unique selling point. I think the things to avoid is the things if you want to go mainstream. You know, you don't want to go in a way like you know, I, I want it to be a graphic designer. So you know, graphic designer for what? Are you going to make yeah. graphics for cinema, uh, a Zoom, or TikTok, or are you a graphic designer for Instagram or Insta Stories? You know, what are you graphic designer for? Or educational platform? You so know. in other words, <laughs> in other words, you also can't be an average person in, in, in your craft. You you better master something great in, in that particular niche. Well, the thing is, it depends, isn't it? Listen, if you want to make money, sell ice cream. Everyone buys it. No one complains. <laughs> Very simple. Right? Yeah. You're in Sri Lanka hot country, get a van, get some ice cream, put it in, put a horn up, put some like bright colors, you'll make good, look good money, right? Sell ice cream for 10 pounds, sell a hundred ice cream, thousand rupees per day, you will get at least 60% profit, right? Over a month, you make good money. It, 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 you know, it, it, it's simple as that. And you know, why bother? Have you ever seen a, a, a angry client coming to ice cream guy. No, everyone's happy. Everyone's <laughs> smiling. Everyone buys it. Even I buy it. I like right? the metaphor. <laughs> yeah, just if you want to, if, if you want to have an easy life, then just sell ice cream. It's sure. easy. And you will have a good time. You will put some music. You'll have happy customers, happy kids. You have a happy wife, happy life. Sell <laughs> ice cream. Plus you make money. True. You know, yeah, and you can be completely average. Yes. It's absolutely fine. You know, you can. You know, no one's gonna go and say like, "I need Michelin star ice cream." No, the ice cream is ice cream. You know, you can sell average ice cream for average people in an average cab, in an average car for the average price. <laughs> live an average life and a happy life. Simple <laughs> analogy. If you want to challenge a little bit more. There are more things to do. Yeah, very, very interesting. I, I like the metaphor. You know, it explains <laughs> everything at once. So my last two questions, right? Yes. Uh, of Let's course, you explain, you explain something about your future, but then you want to be specific next two to three years because, uh, you know, people who watch this might want to collaborate with you, might want to work with you, or I don't know. Uh, so if you disclose anything that, okay, I'm, I'm going to do next, these, these kind of things in, in near future, who knows? Yeah. So, um, well, I, like I said, I'm, I'm working on the brand human side. Um, I'm, I'm working with, um, I'm still in the commercial business for, uh, I, I would say at least for the next couple of years. Then, um, then obviously, uh, let's see how the book project is going. Um, then, um, then I done another project in Budapest because I stayed most of my time uh, in lockdown through the Budapest, and I end up with going and taking hundreds of pictures of the em- empty streets and uh, and that sort of uh, um, you know sports post socialist 
uh, Eastern Europe and a beautiful architecture and stuff. That's over regimen. So that probably going to be the like sort of a second book. Um, then, um, then, then probably in next year, I think I, I spend a little bit time in uh, sort of a Greece, that area that, um, you, you know, I'm, you know, I'm exploring things and, you know, my interest is going from, you know, photography to the stories to, but more storytelling. So more towards like, uh, maybe documentary filmmaking and more more towards like uh, people's stories and uh, and the rather than the uh, you know adverts you know um, that's that's the part I'm leaving. Okay, right? and that's the part that actually pays the good money. Right? Yeah, that's the part I'm leaving. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> because the adverts, you, you you know that's the part you know you make a you know, 15 second advert and you, you, you get really good money for it. And, but that's the part I'm moving and I'm, I'm, I'm going towards like the more uh, storytelling sort of aesthetic that, that's sort of origin. Okay. So my oh, last, the last question. question. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, your advice to young artists who are developing their craft now. You know, we are in a, we are in this microwave world, you know, instant world, right? So, uh, I'm, I'm sure you would have spent quite a lot of time in mastering your craft, you know, to become successful. I'm sure you would have done a lot of things. So I'm sure you can share some tips or, you know, some great advice, deep advice as what they should be doing to establish I, themselves. Yeah, I think, I think you need to find what makes you happy. Then do that. that, that that's it. I mean, that is simple as that. Right. You need to find what makes you happy and do that. And if you and don't do anything else because you're going to suffer. You're yeah. going to suffer <laughs> mentally, physically, and it's just a miserable life. You, you, you just need to make sure what makes you happy. And, and you know, sometimes what makes you happy yesterday doesn't make you happy tomorrow. <laughs> right? And, uh, and you need to have a guideline. So I know within photography, filmmaking, things make me happy. So I am doing different things within that segmentation right so it changes you know i used to do weddings i not not a fan of it but i still love it um we used to do that at events i don't do events anymore um you know used to do drone pictures i don't do drone pictures anymore um a bit oversaturated so you know things only evolve but that's my sort of a area so as an example, you could say I'm a baker. I like baking stuff. You know, you can start doing like a little bit of a cake. Tomorrow I do a patties. Tomorrow they are. It's okay. You, do, you take about three months and explore. Do I like to make cake? Mm, no, I'm going to do cupcakes. No, I'm going to do buns. No, I'm going to make sandwiches. That's, that's it. So that makes you happy. Because at the end of the day, it has to make you happy. True. You, you know, How my true. camera cameras and my stuff, it makes me happy. I look at it, it makes me happy sometimes. So we see, you know, only I can indulge that happiness. Sometimes my girlfriend and people around me goes like, this is like a jungle. I, I, <laughs> we just don't understand. I'm like, don't touch anything. Like, this is just <laughs> every wire matters. Right? Just don't Tell touch me about anything. it. Tell me about right? it. <laughs> and, yeah. So uh, it, 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 I, they always say that like one person's rubbish, other person's treasure, yes. right? So, the, so uh, it's my happiness. So you, you, need to find the, you need to find your happiness. And, and my advice to anyone young, um, really sit down with yourself, go away somewhere, um, uh, speak to a couple of supporting individuals and say, like, listen, this is what makes me happy. And you, you could say to someone, say, you know what, I, I'm going back to this ice cream meta metaphor again. I like selling ice cream. Then you know what, sell ice cream, get your first ice cream van, franchise it, have 10. You have a business and you are yeah. happy stay, and you are selling home. ice cream. <laughs> and you are selling and other people are now selling ice cream for you. And you just collect the profit. And that will make, even make you happier. Right. So, <laughs> so, so I think I think for me, um, it, it just it, you know you can be the most bad ass IT guy in the world, and if you don't get a good night's sleep, if you can't have a good chat with someone, and if you can't afford a hot meal without from a restaurant without worrying 
about how to pay bills, then you really need to sit down and think about what makes you happy. Because sure. end of the day, it's not the meal, it's not the designer clothes or it's the car, or whether you stay in London or you have to. You know, when I go to sleep, and um, there, are, there are numerous times I didn't wake up for flights. And I, well, I mean, re- there was a recently I actually woke up and, and I said to my girlfriend, listen, if you have to wake up at four, uh, you know, my flight, I got, you know, you know, there's a flight at four o'clock and we cut by one, nine o'clock and we were just both laughing. And she was just laughing. She looked at the time. It's like, do you know it's nine o'clock? I was like, what? It's nine o'clock. What? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the flight's gone. And, um, it, you know, there's a crazy story. There's, there's many crazy stories like that. But, you, you know, it, but it's okay. You, know, you have okay. to have a little bit craziness and, uh, in life. And, but, you know, even in that moment, you just have to, you just have, to have happy, happiness. And, um, you know, my happiness is mostly around the people I love uh, and people what I do. And, uh, yeah, thank you for having me. Find it. Yeah. So uh, we, we always uh, offer a book to one of the uh, participants. So this time it is uh, Mahesh Yogam who, who came here and you, who said it's uh, great about nature and all that. So Mahesh, uh, please uh, uh, inbox your mobile number and your home address. We'll send you a book uh, courtesy of Pick a Book. Pick a Book is a book reading club where you read a club and come and present it to the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, my both my sons are members of Pick a Book, and I always give credit to them for bringing out the best of them. Uh, so, by courtesy of Pick a Book, uh, you win. Congratulations, Mahesh. Yeah, <laughs> that's uh, you know, there's some motivation for you to come here and uh, speak to us. So, uh, yeah, Calvin, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. I think it's so inspirational. I'm going to make a small clip out of this about, you know, four to five yeah, minutes, sure. you know, take the yeah, best yeah, yeah. part of it and then, you know, we'll yeah, share yeah. it uh, among our audience. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. And then I wish you all thank the you. best uh, with regard to your book yeah. projects and take care and uh, stay safe. Yeah. Stay safe and stay liquid. Keep moving. <laughs> See you later. Bye now. <laughs>